and welcome to week 15. We are almost done with our entire course. And you have been working hard and learned so much. So what we're going to talk about now are healthcare trends. All right. So there is an article in um, Becker's Hospital Review, which is a very well-respected industry journal with five emerging trends in health IT for 2022. And I thought we would go over them. And yes, you are focused on your career in medical coding and billing, but I want you to just have these things kind of in the back of your mind because they could provide areas for future opportunity. The fact of the matter is, is technology is not going anywhere. It is actually integrating even further with healthcare because we have already seen over the last 10 years or more, the incredible, I know I use that word twice, but it is a real, I find it, amazing when I look at at the differences between after technology in healthcare and before technology in healthcare, patients are so much better off. There is so much more that we can accomplish for patients and their health. And it enables patients to truly be a part of the healthcare team, which is where they should be. Now, it's true that the average person is not educated in healthcare. You know, certainly not further than reading a couple of articles um, on their newsfeed. But the fact remains that um, technology has made a huge difference in, I lost my train of thought. How about that? Okay. <laughs> I, I have no doubt within the next 10 years, I'll probably have a, okay, just replace that, that app in my head. Okay. Um, the point of the matter is, is that there are lots of opportunities career-wise for you. Um, and, and as we integrate more health IT and for patients, oh, that's what I was talking about. Okay, so for patients to um, really be a member of the team, they now have information at their fingertips that 30 years ago, no, a lay person, nobody who wasn't a physician and could prove it was able to access health information that we have access to now uh, using sources like Medline Plus, which is from the a website from the National Library of Medicine and the National Institutes of Health written in plain English and uh, great illustrations and videos and the point is, is that the information is much more readily available so that patients can become active in their own health care and make better decisions for them. This is very personal, okay? And the truth is, is that most people don't look into this um, unless they have a diagnosis or a suspected diagnosis. and and that's fine. We need them to focus on what their their things are. We still have to buy things and retail and go to the bank and, or maybe not go to the bank, but anyway, there's an app for that. So <laughs> I've only had half a cup of coffee. All right. So I thought if we went over the trends that they are predicting for 2022, that it could give you some ideas of where health information is going and can help you get some ideas for things you can add and, and use to augment your coding abilities 
as well as future career moves. Okay, I took a long time to get there. I hope you stuck with me. All right, so we are seeing this um, as health IT comes in, it is an evolution because it changes and it, it changes things. And then that enables opportunities for different and more changes. And it just keeps going and going and going. Okay, so um, there are five health IT trends that CIOs stands for Chief Information Officer. Okay. All right, so number one, digital health funding has been shattering records. Um, the largest healthcare systems are investing in digital health companies and projects this year, okay? So maybe you pull out your textbook from your computers in healthcare and read it a little more solidly and do some information research to find out how um, these projects might affect you as a me professional medical coder and someone who wants to grow within the health information management and health informatics department, okay? Because this is serious business. I mean, we are talking about millions and millions and millions of dollars that health systems are investing in digital things. Now, when I talk about career opportunities, I am not even talking about getting into technology as in learning how to do, you know, the other kind of coding, the technological computer coding. I am talking about understanding and learning about software programs that already exist that you can recommend, that you can invest your education, your learning about, and you can bring them to your supervisor, your director, and say, look what's coming. This could make a positive impact in what we do for our patients. So when I say investing in technology for your part, for your career future, I am not talking about zeros and ones. I'm not talking about computer coding. I'm talking about understanding what is happening with software and hardware that we can recommend and adopt for our facilities, because we're in the thick of it and we understand what it can do, what it may not be able to do, okay? All right, telehealth, yes, okay. So, you know, telehealth has existed for quite a long time and the, then COVID came. And this is one of the wonderful things that came out as a positive thing from the pandemic is the fact that physicians and healthcare uh, service providers were forced to adopt telehealth so they could continue to care for their patients as best as could without totally cutting them off. Because if you remember in 2020, there was, you know, don't come here unless you have a serious reason, you know, to be seen in person, um, still kind of hard to do a pap smear or give a flu shot over telehealth. But the fact is, is that telehealth communications and touching ground um, with patients, uh, especially those with chronic illnesses, had a tremendously positive impact on these patients' health. And physicians who were scared and resistant to even trying telehealth now are all in. They have learned how to use it. They're not afraid of it anymore. And they're understanding how it can augment their practice, okay? Now, it's logical that 
in 2021, there continued that upswing of telehealth. And now in 2022, we're seeing that subside a little bit because yes, there are patients, there are, there are patients like, wow, I can really go to see my doctor. I want to do that. Okay. <laughs> Just get me out of the house. Okay. It's, it's very freeing, right? Um, and now the whole mask, no mask. I don't know. I'm so confused about that. But the point is that CMS and other third-party payers are seeking to maintain reimbursement for telehealth because they understand the benefits of it to patients. And when you look at the obstacles that may arise in a patient trying to get to the doctor, maybe they can't get off work. It's, you know, an hour to get there and then you got to sit in the waiting room and then you're seen and then you got an hour back. That's a lot of time out from work or, um, or from home. Uh, maybe the patient doesn't have transportation. Maybe the patient doesn't have a babysitter. I mean, there are lots of really valid reasons why people find it challenging to show up physically at the doctor's office. And therefore, there will continue to be a place for telehealth in our post-COVID, post-pandemic world. It will be less, but it'll still be there. So your part, of course, is to maintain your ability to accurately code telehealth visits. Remember in the CPT book, they have a little star next to them, the codes. But, and remember, it has to be video and audio. But the fact is, is that um, these are very valuable. And, and particularly with mental health televisits, because again, the patient doesn't have to worry about being seen walking into that psychiatrist's office or that therapist's office. Also, help for rural health clinics where there might not be a, a doctor's office or a hospital for 100 miles. So... We have it now. Everybody is, is comfortable, for the most part, with using it. It will reduce in use, but it, I think it will find its um, water level, okay? In other words, it will find where it fits into the whole scope of healthcare services. I don't know if any of you are old enough to remember, but... Um, it used to be that there were hospitals and there were doctor's offices and that's it. There were no urgent care centers. There were no minute clinics. You couldn't go to a drugstore to get a flu shot. Um, so we have over the years expanded the way patients can access um, physician care, access to services. And a lot of times, all they need is that little chat, okay, which can be done in a Zoom call. Of course, it has to be HIPAA, but you know what I'm saying. So that is definitely going to going to settle down less than 2021, but it's still going to be here. All right. Hospitals are ramping up predictions against cyber attacks. And of course... We must ensure that our HIM partners, which is the IT department in hospitals, and sometimes it's the same in a smaller facility, um, we must make certain that we are compliant with HIPAA security rule to the letter of those safeguards, okay? But as you can see, the cyber attacks over... Um, over the last couple of years and even into 2022 are not only becoming more frequent, they are becoming more sophisticated. And, you know, honestly, I don't want you to worry about this because this is how we rock, okay? Since the beginning of time, um, you know, it used to be that people had no locks on their doors, 
of their homes, okay? Then unwanted visitors would walk into their homes, so they invented the lock uh, that kept unwanted visitors out for a while until the criminals stepped up their game and were able to get through the lock. So we stepped up our game and made more sophisticated locks. I now have a lock that locks and unlocks with an app on my phone, okay? My point is that uh, a, lot of, a lot of innovation is prompted by criminals so that we can fend off their, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so this is something, again, I'm not suggesting that you get into um, uh, learning how to, um, sorry, uh, learning how to create software to stop cyber attacks. But within your realm in the medical records department and the health information management department is um, training and confirmation to comply with HIPAA's security rule. Because uh, remember, HIPAA, both the privacy rule and the security rule is all about protecting information. That, that's our middle name, right? Health information management. Okay, so it is very important that we stay abreast of what is happening and how to prevent what can be prevented. And sometimes it's us because we are the health information specialists to carry that forward to our directors and our board of directors, okay? Knowledge is all I'm promoting. It's all I'm proposing. <laughs> oh, great. So this is a combination live chat blooper reel. Okay, so multi-billion dollar, dollar health IT acquisitions. So what's happening is as, and, and this is kind of interesting, is healthcare conglomerates, you know, the big hospital, um, are buying up IT companies or merging with them. So it becomes more of a create what we need in house, okay? And then on the other side of that, we have Microsoft, Oracle, of course, Apple have all gotten into health information. Um, so the fact is, is that, um, whether you know it or not, and you certainly should know it by now, um, there was a wedding and healthcare and information technology got married and this will be forever. So it's very important that, that we find our ability to know what is happening in our, excuse me, in our sector of the industry, okay? And this is all health information sector of the industry. I'm not asking you to watch um, videos and learn techniques about the newest way to do a heart transplant. I'm not talking about the clinical side. This is our realm. This is our sector of the healthcare industry, health information management and informatics, which is, that's the baby, the baby. Okay. So healthcare and technology got married. They had a baby. The baby is named health informatics. Okay. All right. Last and certainly not least, is innovation initiatives are moving at a fast, fast pace. And that's why you need to stay on top of what is going on. This is not complicated. This means, you know, getting free newsletters in your inbox and even just reading the headlines until you find something that's oh, I heard the director talking about that or, or something, okay? Um, 
And maybe I can learn a little more about what's going on in this new innovation that is directly related to health information management, because that's what we do. Okay, so whether it's keeping up on the annual changes to the code sets or getting deeper into that innovation of how we integrate with the electronic health record and then enter the codes and create the claim form and deal with that, this is all technology. And you don't want it to run you over. Okay. This is new. This is, I think it's exciting. I really do. I think it's so amazing as to what we have accomplished over the last 10 years alone. It's probably closer to 15 years. I don't know. I have COVID calendar in my head, but the point is that this is your future. And all I'm asking you to do is keep an eye on it. Okay. All right. And you're going to read chapter 13. I know it's week 15 and you're reading chapter 13. Don't let this confuse you. The information is there for your benefit. Do you have a question or, or a thought about something that you're reading in the chapter? Email me. I would love to discuss it with you or explain it further or something. Okay. And I shared with you the Federal False Claims Act summary, which is very, 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 very pertinent to your jobs and keeping you out of prison. It's part of my job too. Okay. You know what you're going to do. You have a question. You have a confusion. You have an I'm not so sure. Okay, email me. I love it when you email me and ask me questions. We can email back and forth. We can make an appointment to talk on the phone. We can make an appointment for a one-on-one -on -one Zoom, a one-on-one -on -one FaceTime. We can do WhatsApp. We can do Skype, whatever. And see, that's, again, that's another thing that I'm talking about with regard to technology. This right now, okay? When I first started teaching on uh, line, there was no this. And, and this gives us a tremendous opportunity to share information, especially for me, okay? So technology is happening. Just keep, all right, you don't get this eye or this eye, okay? And a few of the brain cells, that's good, okay? Email me if you have any questions. Stay safe.